Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. Oh, and there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the bar. Welcome to the RTEJ podcast on this fine, bright June Monday morning after the most explosive, I think John Fogarty described it as explosive in the examiner. And I think it's a fair, uh, without getting too hyperbolic about it, I think it is a fair assessment. It was a brilliant draw in so many ways. Glad to have Enda McGinley and Malachy Clerkin with us this morning. And it's the only place to start, really. And, uh, and the only one, I mean, I know, look, Dublin Mayo will will tickle the fancy for so many neutral observers but Kerry Tyrone you know it's just it's fantastic well if Tyrone are going to step up and produce the goods it's now or never because 2023 has got six days probably I'd imagine that's going to be the Saturday game uh, so five days from now it can be all over unless they turn in an absolutely massive performance because not unless it's going to take down Kerry but yeah, hugely, hugely appetizing. We've, we've talked about too many games, not enough not enough drama, not enough jeopardy. There's a bit of jeopardy and a bit of bloodletting both last weekend and this weekend to come, and then we'll have the four teams standing. So you've got the four, probably the four big hitters. I'm not putting Drone as, as sort of one of the favourites. No, but you're right, you're right, yeah. But they're one of the recent All-Ireland winners, one of the recent All-Ireland finalists. All four of those teams, Mayo, Dublin, Throne, Kerry, are the big hitters from a traditional point of view. And for me, when you get to the latter stages, the teams that have been there and done that, you have to give, when it's 50-50, you have to give them the nod until the other teams prove otherwise. So you have them four teams pull, pull together and they'll kill two of each other. And then you have the four teams that are trying to make the big breakthrough. Mm. Uh, Armagh, Derry, Monaghan, Cork, no Ireland finals of recent times uh, between any of them. Uh, so perfect, perfect draw really for all the neutrals most of the teams the heavy hitter side of the draw will obviously be a wee bit disappointed but all them other four teams Armagh, Derry, Monaghan, Cork they will really fancy their chances of making that All-Ireland semi-final and it is they're fantastic draws I think Enda mentioned it as well there Mal in terms of the opportunity that it affords Armagh, Monaghan, Derry and Cork particularly on no, there's no sides because it's potentially yeah. a draw again at semi-final stage but you know from those two four from those two quarter-final pairings it's a fantastic opportunity obviously Derry would be hot favourites against Cork I would probably see Armagh, Monaghan maybe as very much a 50-50 so it's a great chance for those teams as well isn't it? I, it's an enormous chance I, I honestly don't think there's one team going to uh, Crook Park next weekend thinking that um, it, well definitely none go and thinking it's a forlorn hope um, and when you think of let's wind the tape back to the, like the year before the Super 8s came around um, and you got to the last 8 you got to All-Ireland quarter final weekend like you were, even back then you were going like there's a couple of these games are going to be turkey shoots there's no mm. turkey shoots here like yeah. you know there's absolutely no like if Derry are the are the biggest favourites like Cork have beaten two division one teams mm. you know are, are they like Cork are absolutely have momentum behind them they have absolutely like they're chalk and cheese from what they were a couple of years ago. You can see how structured they are. You can see how much of a like a, like a professional team they are now. To use a to, to a, an inappropriate word, but you know what I mean. Like they yeah. they are you know they're not you know just going out and giving it a go. Like they they are like they're a really they're a really good side. And I don't know like the I. I wouldn't, I don't think anybody could, I'd be very surprised if somebody could pick the four winners from the weekend. Mm, yeah. Like, no, yeah, like, I, I suppose. And get, and get them right in, in retrospect come next month. But, uh, it is, what, a, it, what it, I, it, sorry, Enda. What I'm loving is the fact, it used to be sort of in the old days, whenever teams reached this stage, there was a real sheen off a couple of mm. teams because they were perfect. Mm. Uh, the season is that long and convoluted now that there's been a bit of a, 
hit off everybody. Everybody's been involved in a bit of a car crash, and the the the, the buses that are coming through <laughs> these 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 wagons that everybody loves jumping on. Well, now they're a bit battered and bruised at this stage, but it's nearly all the better for it. But every team has had weaknesses pointed out, so every other team will want to get after them with weaknesses. But there's nobody perfect there. Uh, and that means everybody's flaws is exposed. It's a very real and raw looking championship, but it's nearly all the better for it, you know, when you don't really know what of what teams is going to show up on next 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 weekend. I was in this morning to help Darren with the with the draw, you know, and um, it was very funny because we did a couple of dry runs and Kerry drew Monaghan on both occasions and said to Darren, that means because they you know, they could have only drawn one of two teams, Monaghan or Tyrone. Mm. And when they drew Monaghan twice in the dry run, I said, well, that's Kerry Tyrone anyway. <laughs> said, so, 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 what you're saying there, Roy, was that two draws <laughs> were Kerry through Monaghan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the real one, the real one, the real... and on the third time, lucky, uh, uh, they kept the, going until the they got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, keep going till you give me the answer that I really want. But, <laughs> the, um... the fridge was open, the cold ones were put in. Uh, there we go. Very good. That's interesting. Yeah. Good insight. Uh, listen, it was it's. It's a fantastic draw. Like it's a bit of a fixtures conundrum, I suppose, from um, the CCC's uh, perspective, because you're looking at two near enough full houses. I would imagine it will. They'll certainly be close enough. And the two big, fi- the bigger fixtures. Let's be perfectly honest. Dublin Mayo and Kerry Throne will probably have to be kept apart just because the, the the draw. And then obviously you've got the complication around Mayo with a six day turnaround and trying to give them an extra day. And then do you play Kerry on a Saturday, which affects it? So look. There's a few hoops to jump through, and I'm sure that'll all come out at lunchtime, by which time people will know. And for anyone that is listening to this, uh, we don't at the time of recording, just as an FYI. I think from a, but just to go back to that carry throne thing, I was jotting up some little stat- statistics for Darren. Like they've played eight times in the championship. It's four all, and it's the first championship meeting since um, the famous semi final, which went to extra time. Uh, incredible game of football, and obviously, you know, a little bit of controversy in the background. And earlier in the year, and uh, you know, Tyrone had sort of played in fits and starts in the league, but really came alive when Kerry rocked up in Healy Park. And there's just something about the Kerry jersey for Tyrone people, isn't there? Like, I think we're going to see a massive Tyrone performance. No different to what we probably saw on Saturday against Donegal to go to Bally Buffet and win comfortably. The Canavans obviously playing an you know, unbelievable football, Rory and Dara. But I think Tyrone are like Tyrone will be eating nails for breakfast ahead of this, wouldn't they? <laughs> Look, they'll, they'll definitely be looking forward to it. But they, they did very much spring a massive performance in the league, which sort of paid into this thing that Tyrone do up it for Kerry. Absolutely. Uh, and that, once again, I've said it before, that's that's sort of where we see Kerry. Yeah. And where Kerry are. And, and Tyrone love coming in, being a bit written off. So those bookies' odds will, will work absolutely fine with the Tyrone mindset. They want to come in and feel as if uh, they have to give absolutely everything. Uh, and then they're in the game, and as long as they can get themselves into the game, because Kerry, if Tyrone produce the level that they've produced at times this year, and Kerry produce what they can produce, you could end up with a turkey shoot. Like Kerry have enough power up there, and Tyrone have been flaky enough to for it to be a comfortable win for Kerry. Uh, I'm really hopeful that the Throne boys do bring everything they've got. They're going to need it uh, to take down Kerry. But those are the those are the best wins. Those are the games you want to take part in. Certainly for for Throne players, you really pride yourself on that. Uh, and they showed enough against Donegal that I I think they are clicking. When you go through the lines in their team, they are 80, 90 percent there to having a really phenomenal unit at the minute and forwards that are coming in on form, which is absolutely key. Uh, can they produce the big one? They they are now going to have to. Uh, Kerry's midfield for me on long kickouts is their Achilles heel at the minute. And one of Tyrone's form lines is their midfield. Uh, so I think that's going to be a key thing, how, how Jack tries to nullify that and how Kerry can up their game in that compartment. But I think that is the key battleground for me in terms of how that game goes. Big advantage, Mal, for the teams that obviously had the weekend off. And, well, uh, yeah. Mm. So I suppose actually, is it a big advantage? Mm. Is the first question, and secondly, yeah. then, is this format now slightly vindicated for maybe some of the naysayers 
given you know what we're now facing into i, I, I listen i can put Me my too. hand up as well right okay is this format vindicated to a degree in that might it change teams perceptions next year in relation to the early rounds of the round robin well, consider you, it, w- one of the great uh, failings of the format so far was that it gave arseholes like us weeks and weeks and months to and whinge months and moan <laughs> of no uh, interesting football. And so we spent our time on podcasts yapping about how shite the format was. Uh, and now, after two weeks of unbelievable drama and yeah. football, uh, we can sit and pronounce and say it's great, it's great, it's great. So, uh, I, I, I think uh, the the lesson I've learned from this championship is to say absolutely nothing until it's over, oh, yeah. uh, and we can we can decide then. I do think that there's an interesting thing here that the two Dublin and Kerry end is absolutely right. Everybody has had their flaws exposed to some extent. But we don't know yet what Dublin mm. and Kerry's flaws are when it really, really matters. When you think about it, both of them, like Kerry have played one Division One team and got beaten, got beaten yeah. out the gate in Killarney. Uh, Dublin have played one Division One team and, and drew, drew with Roscommon, uh, who are now gone. Um, Dublin have that. That's Dublin's only game against a Division One team since last year's All Ireland semi final. Uh, like we have no idea actually what Dublin's level is, and we're going to find out. We're going to find out against a male team that have been playing Division One teams all year. That have I think, like they they won what they won four games in Division One. They won the league final against the Division One team. They uh, lost to us common, but beat now beat Kerry and Galway. That's that's total. That's a level of battle hardened hardedness that Dublin can only have, like jimmied up in their training sessions, and the Dublin training sessions don't have a depth of quality that they had in the Jim Gavin era. We we know that. We know that they're fabled A versus B games back under Jim Gavin, you know, you would have the B team have a full forward line of Bernard Brogan, Owen O'Gara and Cormac Costello. Like that's not, that's not who the A team are playing against these Tuesday nights and these Friday nights, you know? So we're not going to know what a week off has done for Dublin or for Kerry until the ball goes in the air and the stadium starts rocking and then we're going to find out. Like we, you, I've watched near enough every Dublin game this year. The all the the big stuff over the winter was okay. They're they've got Jack McCaffrey back. They've got Paul Mannion back, and then Stephen Cluxton landed back halfway through the league, and that's fantastic. Uh, like, but we haven't seen a game where all guns are on the pitch. Everybody's firing. Everybody's gunning. We don't know who they are. And we're not going to find out till this weekend. And I think that's what makes that's what makes this weekend so fascinating. Um, like I would not be waving Dublin through to the semi final here on any level. I certainly wouldn't be waving Kerry through on any level. Hmm. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we got to Monday morning and it would be like the Monday morning after the quarterfinal weekend in two thousand and ten, where Tyrone went out and Kerry went out, and all of a sudden it was anybody's all Ireland. Um I I will that that to me is the big the big imponderable going into the weekend is okay, we have a fair idea who a lot of these teams are because they have been really tested. They've really had to dig games out. We don't know what Dublin and Kerry have mm. because their wins in the group stages came over teams from down the divisions and they weren't really put to the pin of their collar in them. And when they were put to the pin of their collar they didn't win. So Let's see him. Yeah. And Mayo, obviously, no, will be coming up to Dublin. And it, w- it would be classic Mayo, actually, to go and beat Kerry Galway in Dublin. <laughs> That's still not win the All Ireland. Still only being an All Ireland. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they, uh, you know, went down to Salt Hill after a very lackluster 
last 20 minutes, certainly against Cork, where a lot of question marks about them again, made some big calls in terms of his selections. Mm -hmm. Matty Ruan, you know, found himself on the bench. Don't know whether that was an injury or was he unwell or was it? Wasn't. It wasn't. It was a selection. No, no, it was a selection. They said selection. afterwards, no, total yeah. selection. Yeah. So, so I think from a Mayo perspective, and uh, even though it may be a six or seven day turnaround, they have now a little bit more momentum going into this, and they will really relish this prospect as well. You would imagine, like, and to go to Galway and to go to Salt Hill and win and knock Galway out of the championship, beat Galway for the second time in a really key game in league, and then follow it up in championship where it's all on the line. I mean, there's they're made of stern stuff, so I think this is you know the the, the prospect of them now coming up to Crow Park to play Dublin. It's just incredible. As if they've rubbed their hand and sort of taken their normal Shakespearean tragedy that we <laughs> see during the summer and said, you know what, in this convoluted format, we can double down and do a few twists and turns more during the summer. Mm. But like the, the Cork thing, the Cork loss was almost like a typical Mayo mm. move after such a wave of hype and the positivity that came in and everything going so well and then being massively impressive. And then to go and do that, yeah, oh my... But with the new format, they've had a chance to turn it around and now suddenly they're coming in with momentum. And they've had that sheen rubbed off, off them, which of all teams may only need that, mm. but they need to get it done in a way that they've still time to turn around and survive. And they've, they've got that. We know that they're less, they're less comfortable playing against or playing slowly, attacking slowly and working out those spaces. But they've had a few more games to try and work at that and improve that. That's been under the microscope for them. So they're coming up to Dublin and Malachy's absolutely right. I, I hadn't really thought of it the way Malachy put it. Dublin are completely really un, unproven in, in their current gaze. I know that sounds daft saying about Dublin, but they're sort of playing at a level. But we haven't seen and we're always suspecting that there's another gear or two there. We have not seen it. Uh, so if it's not there, you can sort of tell the pace and the power that Mayos are coming with, and they're going to be coming with a renewed confidence now after that Galway game, hitting Croke Park, ready to really push on through now that they've, they know they've had a brilliant season so far. They've had their definite hiccup, and suddenly they looked as if they were going to drop the ball in front of an open goal, having had their great victory over Kerry. But it has given them time. The extra game actually helps them. I definitely would have been of the opinion that the teams playing the extra game were going to be handicapped coming in to the quarter final again the team that have rests but and no less for Tyrone and no less for Monaghan and no less for Cork the extra game has only really strengthened them squads and I think strengthened momentum and they can definitely survive another week at full steam and then they're getting their break uh, so I'm not so sure about that logic that I would have held previously I'd be looking at it now, same as Malachy saying, it's much more 50-50 now coming into this, about whether the break is all that necessary. I think depending on where the team is coming from, that extra game, obviously, as long as it goes well, uh, can really give them team that momentum boost coming into the biggest game of the season. I know it wasn't a classic in Salt Hill yesterday, Mal. No, I found it compelling, I'll be honest. Mm. I loved it. I absolutely yeah, loved yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it wasn't a classic, but that can happen. You couldn't I, have I, a classic in that window. Right? I was just going to yeah. say, like yeah. in a in a fixture like that, there's almost three protagonists three on, yeah, yeah. on the field. <laughs> there's the home, the away, and the wind, yeah. and it does spoil the game as a contest because it effectively becomes what you do with it and what you do against it. And you know, I think in fairness to Mayo, he rolled the dice; they gambled. I was speaking to Darren this morning because I was very curious. I don't think we found this out. Like, I think Mayo won the toss and elected to play against it. Now, most teams will play with the wind um, but by virtue of the fact that you have, you, you're taking the chance on whether or not the breeze will die down. But I suppose in Salt Hill, you could probably be fairly safe to assume it won't. Um, but I still found it an absolutely enthralling game to watch. I loved it. And I was just curious to you as to your views and Galway. I mean, to go from potential favourites to win the whole thing outright to now find themselves out even before the quarterfinals, that's a that'll sting. It'll sting, yeah. Like I, I think I, I found a couple of things really interesting about it. Um that was the first <laughs> that was the first second half that Mayo have won since the Donegal game in February, 
no, March, sorry, Paddy's weekend, they beat Donegal in the league. In six games in a row since then, they had managed to win the second half. Mm-hmm. And that was really contributing to their, their fade out in games. Like they were whatever, they were five points up in injury time against Louth and only won by a point. They were six points up in the 57th minute against Cork and lost by three. Um, they, I think you're right. I think that they, they they deliberately sort of picked a team for the first half and a team for the second half. Um, and to do that, knowing that they hadn't won any second halves, uh, I suppose, I suppose get, having that sort of wind at your back uh, to help you along to try and win a second half was probably a good way to go. I think for Galway, it's. I was at their Armagh game, and I know Enda was as well. I came out of it going, they're fine. They're no great shakes. They have, like, Sean Kelly is clearly their most influential player. And I don't know how much of the TV coverage of the Armagh game showed exactly for how long he was hobbling around on the pitch and exactly how kind of like gimpy he was like he was really for five five minutes at at the end of that game he was a complete passenger and there was one stage actually he went back and basically stood in goals uh while the ball was up the other end of the pitch like like uh the uh, Gleason the Go- Galway goalie was further up the pitch than he was like he was essentially just walking around and you're going this guy is so key to their effort that it, they he clearly doesn't want to go off and they're clearly okay with leaving him to decide that for himself. But like you're coming out of that going, if he's not at full strength next week, he is an X factor in the way that, <laughs> in an odd kind of way, he's a dependable X factor in a way that Shane Walsh is an undependable X factor as he showed yesterday. Like, the Shane Walsh we saw in the All Ireland final last year, I think why one of the reasons people took such great joy out of his performance was that he did it on the biggest stage, and yeah. for his whole career, people have been waiting for that from Shane Walsh because you look at him and you go, "That's the ideal. That's what a Gaelic footballer at its absolute pinnacle ought to look like." And you know, he was he was like mine and most people's man in the match in the All Ireland final. And I know All Ireland finals, you have to kind of give it to the winner and what have you. But and Clifford was very good, obviously. But um, but I think the reason people were so delighted for him was that he also has this kind of performance in his locker. And what a terrible day to produce it. You know, when Damien Comer is is hurt and can't go at full throttle when Sean Kelly can't go at full throttle. Like, they needed the very best um, version, version of-, of Shane Walsh yesterday. And what, he score four from ten shots or something like that? Uh, well, well, whatever about... I, I mean, look, he, I don't think even going back all throughout his career, I'm not entirely sure how much he contributes from open play. And I know he had the day of days in the All-Ireland final. He's not young, like... He's Shane, 30. He's 30, you know, yeah. so he, he's trying to go well. But the dolly in front of the posts with yeah. the wind. Yeah. I mean it just seemed a li- it seemed a bit unserious or something like that. You know, it just not 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 quite kind of reaching the, the magnitude of the of the game and, and, and what and you know, sometimes teams can can like fall into a bit of a false sense of security when they have that strength of wind, mm-hmm. as in they don't take such precision with with everything that they're trying because they know the wind will kind of do a bit of their job for them and what have you. But like Galway kicked that game away in the first half. Like I, I, I think that was when they had all the possession. That was when they had so many chances. They really had a chance to get eight, nine ahead. Um, and, and they didn't. And it was, it looked like a five point win. It was probably about a five point win and, uh, and Mayo wiped it out uh, in, in the early part of the, of the second half. Yeah. It's a real sting for Galway because these, I, I remember texting a friend of mine uh, on the night of the all Ireland final last year. And they like the, the thing about coming close in an all Ireland final is that the snake goes all the way down to the bottom. Mm-hmm. You don't start yeah halfway up again the next year you start right at the bloody bottom and you have to do it all again and it doesn't like 
five minutes to go in the in the All Ireland final last year, Killian McDade leveled the game, and Galway were there. They they were absolutely there. They had five minutes of football to play to win the All Ireland, and now they're now they're a year away from it again. Yeah, and it's yeah. uh, it's a killer. It's an absolute killer. First ever team to win a provincial championship and not make an All Ireland quarter final. Like, yeah. you know, it's just it's a killer. Great. Fight, you know? It's a great way you mentioned about Shane Walsh and just almost appearing unserious over that free, but isn't, isn't that the nature of why we love him? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We all admire. He is a beautiful footballer, almost like a Ronaldinho in the soccer world. You know, plays with that smile on the face, plays with a free spirit. It's not the era for that type of forward, but he, he's obviously had some huge performances. But he doesn't play with that raw aggression and fight and anger and hatred that most that pretty much encapsulates most other top like yeah. I remember seeing Clifford against Monaghan. I can't mind what it was in Clunas. And he was Kerry's youngest forward, snatched the draw at the end. He came yeah. off absolutely fuming, that mm-hmm. anger in him. And I having grown up playing alongside Peter Canavan, and you've seen so often the anger in him and when he at you in a dressing room for not doing X, Y, and Z, and I at you on the pitch. You could see that in Clifford. You see it with Conor McManus. Mm. You see it, Michael Murphy had an edge to him. Stevie O'Neill had an edge to him. Even Darry Canavan going back to this year has that edge. Yep. Con O'Callaghan has that edge. And for me, the top forwards in our game, they take so much punishment, without mm. a doubt. Uh, the top forwards in our game have both this brilliance and skill level and then have this absolute fight. Sheehan is a player with the smile and the openness and the friendliness. But at times you just wish there was a greater dog in him because I think you would see him come out. Comer has that. Mm. As he is wonderful to watch as Shane Walsh, he's not. So it's sort of that balance. He can't have what Shane Walsh gives us and then put him in that sort of wolf's clothing that most of our great forwards have. Amaris Fitz was your beautiful footballer, but without maybe that absolute dog in him if you know what I mean so there is that sort of contrast in styles and, and Shane Walsh like you just feel from the penalty against Armagh mm. the free kick against Armagh which would have made it a completely different script and then obviously yesterday as well so it's a tough but he's had a wonderful like you look at what he done last year and cross county and club and everything else so it's it's a tough it's a tough reality check for him but I'm sure he'll come back stronger but yeah it's just interesting when you look at the personalities that, that is demanded of our games very very top stars mm. and how you almost need that both sides to continually come up to the top level uh, <clears throat> it was interesting you mentioned Morris Fitz not having the dog Morris taught me he did his H dip in the school that I was in and they'd played Cork was he your typical carry man that yeah, had the dog they, yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. Was but they, they'd played Cork the previous day in a league game and he um got into a tussle let's just let's just say with Niall Cahalan and he came in with the biggest shiner I have <laughs> ever, I have ever seen and uh, as a teacher maybe not so much a good look but it was uh, it was good crack because everybody in my school obviously it was a Gaelic football school you know uh, loved it and he took it in good spirits and fairness to him but we just a quick word on Tyrone and uh, um, just I suppose the fact that the if you look at where Tyrone were, they were a kick of a ball from John Heslin of going out of the championship, right? Now, here they are, and we know that this is going to spike their interest in a big way. How like, how impressed were you with their display in Bally Buffet? And, you know, are they really? I, I Could Tyrone actually go on and win this thing now? I was I was really really impressed. I was really impressed with their first twenty minutes against Armagh. I, I thought they looked for the first time that year. I thought they looked like a team with a great unity of purpose. A team that really had a sense of what they were about. Probably that comes down to a balance in terms of the lineup that that they're that they're working to achieve uh, against Ballybuffet or up in Donegal in in Ballybuffet. Uh, that certainly came out further. Like their their full back line is in top top form. Half back line going really, really well. Midfield going really, really well. Their inside men are clicking in a way that, that we probably haven't had in a while. Uh, so all of them things look right. We could have probably quite realistically had another one three, one four, one five in that game, uh, and come out with a really handsome win. Would that have done us any good whatsoever? No. In fact, I would have said it. It would have left us worse off. There's a feeling that there's more to come, which is exactly what way you want to be 
uh, approaching the, the game against Kerry. Uh, it's just about backing it up. We have not had back-to-back performances. The Kerry performance remains their best performance of the year for me. Uh, and it's whether they can back that up and, and, and raise it again because uh, they, they, absolutely, they absolutely have to. Obviously, the biggest caveat coming out of Balogfe is the level of their opposition. Uh, Donegal obviously seemed to have recovered a wee bit, but were they really at that level? It's, it's very, very hard to tell. So I think Tyrone will be really happy with that performance, really happy with the result. There will be the wee query about just where Donegal were at. Donegal, for me, were a wee bit disappointing. Uh, and and that's the caveat, but no less than any other team. You don't really know where they are. You know there's potential there. And it's what arrives next, well, presumably next Saturday in Kroger. Mal, I, 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 we need to talk about Manning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> always, we, we always do. We do. And, and I know you probably don't want to... Uh, get the chocolate biscuits out just yet to throw them. But I do, there's two, there's two parts to the question. Just the phenomenal achievement by the miners, first of all, to make a, a first mm-hmm. minor final since pre second world war. Uh, uh, yeah. Since, uh, since I would say almost the uh, day, the second world war broke out since 1939. So there you go. I mean, and then obviously the senior team to go down mm-hmm. and turn Kildare over away from home, obviously in Tullamore, but as a county, I just think it's a phenomenon. And to now look like they're regenerating again. I mean, Conor McMahon, the Conor McManus game time, I didn't, did I? Did, yeah, he came on for the second half. Yeah. Did he? Okay, yeah. yeah. But like, you can see, in fairness to Vinnie Corey, he's starting to plan for the future. Mm-hmm. He's starting to, you know, put a lot more legs into the team. They're in the last eight. They're going to fancy themselves big time against Armagh. They'll know that they'll have Armagh's measure on it on five out of every 10 Sundays. And then double that up with a minor team that now looks like the next generation coming through. What the hell are you doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I like it's, um, it is, uh, it, it, it was, a great day for them in Tullamore on Saturday. I will say one thing in fairness, and, and you know, we have to be fair about everything. I would imagine, and I, and I haven't heard any of this, but I would imagine Kerry were absolutely disgusted to have to play a minor All-Ireland semi-final as a curtain raiser to a Monaghan senior yeah. All-Ireland preliminary quarterfinal. Mm. Because there were virtually no Kerry people there other than families of the players at at very, very most. So I'd say you're talking about a couple of dozen of Kerry people. The the main stand in Tullamore was absolutely stuffed to the gills for the minor match. There there was a crowd of, I think the crowd was 7,800. I would say there was about four or 5,000 Monaghan supporters in the main stand in Tullamore as this minor match, you know, under 17 boys playing a, a minor match, an All-Ireland semi-final. And it may as well have been in Clonus. Like, it may as well have been a home game for Monaghan. I don't know how much, you know, I, I don't. I obviously don't want to take away from anything, but I that was very rough on Kerry. For 17-year-old boys to have to play an All-Ireland semi-final in front of essentially a rabid away support but anyway, I, don't, I don't i don't feel any sympathy for <laughs> <laughs> i'm only joking uh, but uh anyway b- beyond that ah look it's it it's amazing for them look whatever they do up there and look i'm you know I li- i've lived in dublin yeah. for longer than i ever lived in monaghan at this stage so i'm not on the ground up there but whatever they do they always do find decent underage teams mm-hmm. and like from look, like we're, everybody's tired trotting it out they have what is it 32 clubs 31 oh, clubs might even be like that. less and, uh and uh look it is it is the it is the main sport there is you know they don't worry about hurling they don't need the, there was plenty of soccer when i was growing up there but the, I, i'm not sure there's a massive it's 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 as big now look they they get the best out of what they what they yeah. do and uh they have apparently a, a fairly decent under fifteen team coming through as well they do all right with the schools um and they're look 
I I think even it, it was such a really big thing for the supporters there on Saturday that they would almost have taken Monaghan going out in the seniors because they were so delighted to see a minor team beating Kerry like you know at any level like they just it just doesn't really really happen like as and it was mentioned in that David Clifford game from 2018 up in Clonus. Monaghan had Kerry beaten out the gate that day only for Clifford scored he scored the goal which I still think is probably his best goal for Kerry but before it he scored an unbelievable point from out on the left sideline with his left foot that like just couldn't shouldn't have been scored and he was like by far the youngest person on the pitch only for him they would have uh, Monaghan would have beaten him there that day um, as for the seniors look they weren't great there's no doubt about it like Kildare should have won the game they were Kildare butchered four goal chances um, they were Kildare were really on top from say like the twenty second minute to about about the forty eighth or so, like like the twenty half an hour either side of half time. They were they were the better team, and just didn't put Monaghan away. I think they got. I think it was a. a they were th- three points was the biggest margin they got. They were eleven to one five ahead, and the thing with. Monaghan and like I'd say Enda's looking at some of these Monaghan players and going how are you still playing I played against you and <laughs> the game turned on Darren Hughes I took it upon himself to go in full forward and take a mark and it was the first Monaghan score I think in about a half an hour um, repurposing Connor McCarthy as a as a kind of a marauding wing back um, which is like he's not really a wing back you know there are no wing backs the way these games go, there are only forwards coming onto the ball at pace. And so they're better having him coming onto the ball rather than taking it as a corner forward or as a wing forward. So that that has worked out for them. But um they weren't great. Like, you know, I keep talking about division one, division two. Like Kildare only avoided the Talton Cup by the skin of their teeth. Yeah. We forget yeah. at the end of the league. Yeah. Uh Monaghan stayed in division one for the tenth year in a row. It's in these really tight games that I think that Division One football stands to them, because if you look at it, they've won three games in this championship and drawn one. Two of those games and the draw came with literally the last kick of the game. Ryan O'Toole's goal against Tyrone, Carl O'Connell's point against Derry, Conor McCarthy's uh, point against Kildare. So they don't panic. They they know that if they keep doing what they're good at, they'll hang on in games. They know that they don't let games get too far beyond them, and so they leave themselves in with a chance. Um, the like the story of them is is I think it's kind of I like it's it's good for for neutrals to watch because they're a small county and all that. The football itself is it's 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 kind of crap. Like it's real. It's real grinding. It's real like it's not fun to watch. Um, but like they, they have no reason to care about about that. They they have to like when you talk about making the best of your resources. Yes, it's getting good minor teams through. It's it's getting a next generation through. But it's also when you get there, learning how to survive in these games and this style of football that we all give out about is the reason Monaghan can survive in these games. It was a very funny thing that happened at one stage on Saturday. Gary Moen took, uh, I think he took a mark or he got a free and uh, Jack McCarran was inside uh, in the forward line, kind of one-on-one and Moen played the free into him. But as soon as he even shaped to take the free, like it was kind of a trap that Kildare had set. So like the ball, Jack took the ball, but like there was four defenders around him. And he obviously got turned over, the ball got played away. I think Jack McCarran got to his feet and he ate Gary Moen for playing him a one-on-one ball in the forward line. <laughs> he was going, that is not part of the plan. We don't do that because mm, yeah. you are going to get me killed in here. And it, <laughs> it's, it was just interesting that, he, that, that their game plan is we, we turn around, we play the ball backwards, we get in our positions, we have the pay. They have three really like aggressive runners: Carl O'Connell, Connor McCarthy, and Stevie O'Hanlon. That they get on the outsides, 
and to get them to cut inside and get a soft shoulder. That's where like uh, McCarthy's goal came from. It's where like it's why Carl O'Connell is having such an amazing year. Uh, is he, that he just runs on to stuff at pace, beats a man, draws a foul, gets a point, does all of that. Mm. Um, that's there. There's no mystery like Armagh. There's going to be no mystery about how they're going to play next weekend. They are going to do what they do and they're going to hang in the fight until the closing stages. And if it comes down to it, they have the players that can take a score. Like they only kick four wides all day. Like they're very efficient, all that kind of stuff. So it is, um, it's, it, it's great for, for everybody in the county. Yeah, and they're a great team to support, actually. Yeah. I stopped talking about them now, but they are a great team to support because nobody has any expectations. Like, there is nobody in Monaghan today going, we can win the all Ireland. They're just not. They, like, even no matter how kind of blustery you get and you go, ah, oh, we could take our man and we could, you know, blah, blah, blah. Nobody expects them to win the all Ireland. Uh, but all they want out of them is to make the best of themselves, stay in Division 1, get a couple of late winners and... Beat Tyrone, them. beat Tyrone in the Championship, which they've already done. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah, exactly, except, except of course, to beat, beat them when there was no jeopardy. It's yeah, the only yeah. time we ever beat Tyrone yeah. is when, when when you still haven't killed them. We haven't, we yeah. haven't killed Tyrone yeah. off it again. And, and isn't that the key, though? Say. Isn't that the key? Like, yeah. Monaghan... Monaghan's ability to win all their titles, stay in Division One, all of that has been confirmed for loads of years now to their credit. But the biggest thing is they have not. I think they've made one semi final in twenty eighteen when it was a league stage of a quarter final. <laughs> yeah. You know they 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 love the league, yeah. but taking down a big hitter or a, a one of the big teams or any big team in a knockout game in Croke Park, yeah. it's a long time since Monaghan have done that. They hasn't have happened. had more than hasn't, enough chances. Yeah, hasn't yeah, happened. Hasn't happened. Ireland. No, it hasn't so, happened. Like they beat, they beat, like they beat Kildare in twenty fourteen in a in an All Ireland quarter final, I think, or or maybe last twelve game. It was their first win in Croke Park since nineteen thirty. Right. So, like a, a, just across all the other teams, that that record also stands out, mm-hmm. uh, and it goes back to you nailed it, Malagay. They don't believe they can win the All Ireland. Yeah. I don't think they do. No. And I think come this stage of the championship, whether you can or you can't, you have to believe. You have to build that belief within yourself and walk down there as if, damn right, we're here and damn right, we're going to go and win this thing. Why shouldn't we? We're, and you cannot in any way doubt yourself because that that will come back to haunt you. And it just... There's too many times they've got beat in Croke Park for a team that has been going well and able to pull out great results elsewhere. You can argue, are they Croke Park team? That style of football that they have, does it transfer brilliantly to Croke Park? We all know the Croke Park fact of the nature of the pitch, the speed of the games, all of that there does have an impact. But I think the biggest impact is their lack of belief about punching. But they know that has been hanging over them. Yeah. And it hangs over you until you pick a day and you say no. And looking at Armagh, I think that is a team Monaghan can beat. Mm. Uh, I think if this game is in Clonus, or uh, not just Clonus because it's Monaghan's home game, I mean, if this game is in an Ulster Championship game, yeah. you're, you're seeing many ways how Monaghan can win this. So the fact that the bookies have Armagh there, strong favourites and everything, Monaghan have to decide at some stage they're going to step up and show that they, they hate this thing about being patted on the back for how well they've done with small numbers that have come out in loads of other counties. You know why? Why are we getting these sort of fault, uh, platitudes? Well, mm-hmm. go and do the business on a knockout day in Crook Park. That's the challenge, and until they do it, they're going to continue getting these false platitudes. Um, we, we'll wrap it up now fairly soon. There's just two obviously key things. We'll talk about the Talchin Cup because then I know you were there yesterday. One very good game, and one maybe not so good. But I do think it would be remiss maybe to. You know, and obviously I'm playing down the Cork thing, right? But it would be <laughs> it would be remiss not to speak about it. And Maliki mentioned something earlier, and uh, about about support. And I thought it was very interesting. I don't know if Connor Daly fouled that ball at the very end that Brendan Colley gave the free for. And I thought Brendan Colley had a very good game, by the way. He's a, he's a very good referee. Um, 
And I was kind of trying to figure out, is that a foul? I, I couldn't really figure it out if it was or if it wasn't. But I'll tell you who definitely thought it was, was, <laughs> was the 8,000 Cork people who all jumped up at the same time. And it just goes to show how important support is. Oh, support's massive. Uh, these games do go down to the wire. And as much as momentum is so decisive in a season, that momentum and that wave of support coming in behind you at that right time can be huge in these games. Uh, for me, drone support has been a wee bit slow to get out this year. I think there's enough excitement within that team. I would love to see us turn up in big numbers because I, I don't think Kerry famously don't don't particularly travel in huge numbers to Crook Park. And I think that can be a, a one, two point swing if Tyrone can stay in this game and go toe to toe with Kerry and get them down the line, then that factor can spur Tyrone to, to another what would be a massive win to, to try and take down Kerry, reign on the Ireland champions and everything else. So support's massive. Uh, influence on the referee, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> there's yes. always these wee things that, that does influence. Was that our foul? I Funny, I had the exact same thought. Whenever I looked at it immediately, it looked so odd. That you thought, okay, well, that looks stupid. No, no, foul. Uh, you know, and I was happy enough when it was blue, but when you think back, what you know, obviously, was it a hop? Is there a is there you now the, the GA rule book is that convoluted? Maybe there is. Does it describe that a hop has to be a push of the ball down to the ground? Mm. I, I would doubt it. I would say it's a hop as a bounce of a ball. Was that a bounce of a ball? Can you? I don't think that is stipulated anywhere. Uh, you can certainly fist pass it to yourself as long as it hits off the ground, but that wasn't a fist pass. So I don't know. It's another grey area in our rule book that needs a bit of an overhaul. We'll give it a big rattle now for Cork on Thursday in advance of the quarterfinal, which, which by the way, they won't be having too many sleepless nights over. I think it's a great draw for them. And I think it will be, you know, there's two Division Two teams effectively. Um, obviously, they drew in the league. And I don't think Cork will be, you know, look, they'll go up. People are mentioning bonus territory. I don't think they might think it a little bit more than that but before we sign off because we've gone on long enough now I think uh, just in relation to the Talchon Cup yesterday and uh, um, two good game, well one good game and one not so good game would that be fair? <laughs> one one great game the Antrim Mead yeah. game was great it looked as if Mead were going to pull away and then uh, Antrim came right back at them Mead much more solidly defensively set up and there goes the development brand that, that the Talton Cup should represent uh, Antrim gave a really, really credible performance and when it looked as if they might wilt away, they came back really, really strong. Uh, missed a host of chances in the first half and so will feel probably that, that, that they left that game behind them. Uh, but that, that's a really, really strong first season for, for Andy McIntyre. Uh, the other game was a car crash for Leash. I see somewhere I'm, I'm being critiqued for saying there's positives in it for Leash. I was saying there was positives maybe in the overall season for <laughs> Leash and that they were close to promotion in Division 4. But I remember playing Leash in, in my minor days. They were a big team at that stage, uh, Beano McDonald's era. And they won Leinster Championships off the back of that. They were punching high in the National League as well. We played them in the National League final one year as well. Uh, and for them to be sitting now stuck in Division 4 uh, and that, that beating yesterday, look, any game like yesterday can be a car crash and you sort of have to write that off. It was a particularly bad one. Uh, so they, they do have to try and recover. There was enough maybe in their couple of wins in, against Fermanagh and Limerick for them to take something with it. But down, whenever down get going, they are a phenomenal team, but they'll know that Mead will be a very different challenge. But what a brilliant Talton Cup final to look forward to. Like Mead v Down, it's just perfect. Like you can fill columns and columns, Malachi, off off the back of that one, you know. So it's it's a really it's a really good final once again last year with Cavan and West Mead, two cracking teams who have done relatively well this year. Cavan obviously disappointed, but they got the promotion, which is key. So teams that are on the front foot do well in the Talton Cup. That's exactly the message the GA would want going out there. That's a, it's a brilliant uh, Talchon Cup final to look forward to. That will obviously be paired off with one of the All-Ireland uh, semi-finals on the Saturday, most likely on that weekend. It's really good. Like It'll give that Talchon Cup a real shot in the arm to have two sort of traditional football counties in the final again. And hopefully it'll make that second tier competition go from strength to strength. But we're going to wrap up football there. Going to say thanks to Enda. Mal's going to stay on for a bit of hurling chat. We've got Jackie and Shane coming up right after this. He hits it! He hits it! It's over the bar!
So welcome back to the RTGA podcast and it's hurling now. We've got Jackie Tyrrell and Shane McGrath on board. Gents, welcome. And I think there's only one place to start, Jackie. Leinster hurling. It's something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit of a hint of sarcasm wrapped up in that, Rory. But um, yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting that we're down to the same four as last year again. You know, it's... Um, uh, the more things change, the more to say the same as the fella mm. says. So yeah, so listen, it was a, uh, it was um, I suppose the Clare Dublin one was a little bit scripted. We all kind of felt that Clare would um, get over the line, and I thought Tim Tipperary would get over with, with Galway, but um, no. So we're we're back to the same. Only I think the semi finals have flipped this year as a crowd. The Saturday has gone to the Sunday, and vice versa. So yeah, so um, yeah, two weeks time. Looking forward to it. Can't mm. wait. Let's start with Tip Galway. Shane, and I think, look, there was just a flatness and Don Logan, Liam, went into some of it last night in relation to when Tipperary were looking to peak. Obviously, they'd, you know, had to navigate their way through a really difficult Munster Championship and getting out of Munster presents its own problems, as we know. But there was a flatness in their performance. It wasn't there. Like, what, what, what did you put it down to? I don't know. I think there was things happening that never happened. Like um, it was just like say there was a flatness. There was no spark to them. Um, you know, talking to people who you know would be maybe would know what's going on in training. Like that every night of training would be really really tough, and you know maybe maybe that's a factor too. And that like the train so ferociously hard like that. Like did it eventually take its toll on the group? I, I don't know. It's hard to know. It's it's, it's easy to say that I was here sitting now behind the screen, but. They did look. They did look flat. They looked flat against Waterford. You can't take the Offaly game into context because it was a non-event. Like so, no. But they looked hungry that day, right? But against the far lesser opposition, you can get away with it, I suppose. But um, look, they did look flat. It was just small things, Rory. Like say, thirteen minutes gone. Norm McGrath had three wides. Like Norm McGrath mightn't have three wides in three matches another time. You know that's just the efficiency in all players with or the way he uses the ball. Like Shamey Kendi had a ball there in the first half as well, and he just hand passed straight over the sideline. And it was all these, these kind of small things. Like there was, like we were kind of, we were hitting, but like I was going on both sides now, lads. Like for a while, there was just like a game of tennis, like because it was so defensive on both sides. Like we were kind of trying to cut off, Ron was trying to cut off in front of Connor Whelan. And then I don't know why, but it is, Carl Mannion got the run of the place for the first half. And like I was saying to lads, he nearly had a pain in his hurley from hitting the ball there at one stage of the first half. He was getting on so much ball and he had so much time to, to pick it out. But I suppose the ball we were hitting in, we were kind of hoping it would stick rather than, you know, kind of giving a, a, a high percentage ball when you have the bodies back there. And like, as the lad said last night in Sunday game, like as Liam said, when we're hitting those balls from inside the 45, we're just the percentage is so low, like that we're going to win them. And the way Galway were playing, and in fairness, I have to say massive credit to Henry and Galway. They, they got the matchup spot on. And um, they, they they made it a battle and they won the battle and I think that was massive as well. But cheers, lads. I, I I thought anybody that stayed on from Clare or Dublin after the first half must have had absolutely nothing to do Saturday night because uh, <laughs> it was hard. It was hard watching. Like you know, it was. I just have it here, lads. I give it to you quick and let you jump in. Then it was ten seven a half time. If it was ten seven a half time in a junior B hurling match. You'd be you'd be saying it wasn't a great game. The wides was eight six to Galway, right? No, this is where I thought just this is where the kind of uh, the, the the quality I suppose. Galway got five scores from play from seventeen shots, and Tip got three scores from play from eleven shots, and it was just it wasn't good stuff to watch. Maybe lads were nervous. I don't know, but I think that kind of fed into the whole, fed into the game. These mistakes that were being made, um, yeah, there was humid and everything, but um. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, Rory. I can't put my finger on it. We looked flat, but with all those mistakes that were being made, it didn't help the spectacle of a game at all, really. Like you know, The recovery from the Leinster final, Mal, obviously it was such a heart-wrenching defeat mm. to Kilkenny to be largely the better side for most of that match, in fairness. And Kilkenny were really surviving on goals. And So from Henry Shefflin's point of view and from Galway's point of view in terms of where they are, where their season now is... How significant a victory would it would you think that is? Ah, well, it's 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 huge, like because, like, had they lost, like, it became a nothing year, really, didn't it? it, it had they, like, like for all that they were better than Kilkenny for most of the way in the in the Leinster final, to lose <laughs> it and then and then to go out to Tipperary would have just been, it just, and uh, two years of Henry and how 
how much further are they on than than when he took over? Like that that's the way it would have been seen. So it's um it's an it's a, it's a huge victory. It it is a it is an odd one to take lessons out of though, because as as Shane was pointed out there, the halftime score. Somebody sent me the halftime score, and I was down doing the football match between Kildare and Monaghan down uh, down in Tullamore, and trust me, it was no uh, no no picnic either. But but the halftime score there was more or less exactly it was one five to nine, so it was more or less exactly the same as as the hurling match over in mm-hmm. uh, in Limerick. So it was. Um, uh, I I was kind of going. Is that not the score after like twenty minutes? You know, to, for for it to be ten seven at half time. So it's very hard to take too many definitive lessons out of it because if they had won a war, you know that kind of way. If they had come out of it and you know um, had their metal tested the way that that with the way it had been against Kilkenny and they had they come out on the right side of a real sort of barn burner, you could go well. Now look at them; they're 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 catapulting into the latter stages. But I'd say every one of us uh, got uh, texts or uh, or or spoke to somebody from Limerick over the weekend who went nothing nothing for us to worry about here. You know, this is uh, the, the the that game is not something that will have Limerick with, you know fretting. That's not to say that Galway won't challenge them or, or couldn't beat them. I don't believe that. But on the evidence, that game, that particular game was just like, if that's if that's reproduced in the semi-final, Limerick, like, Limerick would want to have even more injuries than, than what they have to, to be really worried about it, I would have thought. The fact that it was slightly stop-start, Jackie, and, you know, it, there was no real fluency in the play. Did that suit Galway, maybe? I don't know who it suited Rory, to be honest, because and maybe we're blinded a bit by the history of these two teams and how they've yeah. served up such massive games. And like Maliki used the word war, like they have had wars before. And I, I think the, the Whites, particularly the Whites, just sucked the life out of both teams and almost kind of fed into probably the nervous energy of Galway and that they were still a little unsure after the Leinster final. And maybe maybe Tip just maybe read a bit too much into the off the game of how slick and how well they were moving. Um, I know Liam Cal wouldn't have wouldn't have been driving that message into him, but like I'm sure the players would have known that that victory over Offaly didn't really stand for anything in the grand scheme of things. But um and you'll find that in games where if there's a number of wides, it just kind of it feeds into the, the the lack of energy in the group and everyone gets a bit nervy. And I thought Tipperary were summed up by one passage of play where Owen Connolly got the ball looked around two or three times, then decided, you know, I'm going to hit it, threw it up as if he had all the time in the world. And it was just, there was so many of those um, moments really within the game, and particularly probably on the Tipperary side. And, and you know, Shane is on about, you know, the Seamus Kendi hand pass and things like that. It was just so unlike Tipperary. Um, and for long periods of the game, it was just error after error. And you talk about a war and, 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 and an all Ireland quarter final. I'd have seen, you know, more blows blow in the in the crash between two toddlers. Like there was nothing. It was so it was so fuel. You know, there was no real fight with him. The only huge positive, I thought, the biggest positive was the defensive display of Galway. And there was questions going into the game. Do you revert back to to Dahi Dahi Burke at three and and Garrod McInerney? But the impressive part is they defended as a unit. They covered each other. They shut down the space. I know the tip attack didn't ask, ask too many questions, but that is a big positive and was a big question mark for Galway going in. So they have probably ticked that box with a certain degree and they probably need to build on it. But I'd still say, you know, when Henry probably sits down this week, he'll still be kind of going, where really are we? Because, you know, there was a huge amount of pressure up it. And you could see that manifesting itself in the body language of Henry on the sideline, and particularly in his post-match interview as well. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's, there's probably more, from a temporary point of view, I'd say Liam Callis, you know, you think of after the water thing, he had a lot of kind of probably soul searching on that. There's probably a bit of that in Tipperary for, for, for the winter because... I would expect it so much more about this Tipperary team, whatever about the lack of ex- execution, things like that, just to not bring that energy and that fight and that work rate that we, you know, just come accustomed to the Link Cal's team. Um, it's very hard to put your finger on, on did they train too hard again? I know that they were down in Photo Island again for training weekend, but they did look extremely flat, Rory. Mm. The Maliki mentioned there, Shane, about Limerick not being overly worried, and that's probably fair. But the former Conor Whelan will definitely give them some uh, pause for thought, you would imagine. And he could have ended up with a lot more than the 1-4 he scored on Saturday night. 
Good as good as score three five handy enough really like you know um and I think that's like I think look I think it's some I think Conor Wheeler's performance is summed up by maybe the craziness of the maybe the first twenty minutes as well with ball was going in like it was twenty minutes before he got his first score like you know I mean there was ball going in both sides and it wasn't a great quality ball lads were just kind of dittery on the ball or whatever but it was still twenty minutes before he got his first score like you usually like getting man of the match. We're kind of looking at him in the first four or five minutes getting on two or three balls nearly and he had to wait 20 minutes before he got a first kind of shot off the goal and then he just kicked on then and look, he would have said himself too, like he he sh- like he should have buried that one there in, in the first half. Fair play to Reece Shelley, he made a great block with his feet, like, you know, but like lads, I, I, I'm looking at this and uh, like, you know, as a, as, a, as a tip person and everything, like that was a two-point win for Galway. I don't know how to put this now, that was a two-point hammering. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you agree or not with that, but like say, and that's hard for me me to say as well as a tip person, but I'm just being honest here to say that like Galway were by far the better team in this game. Like even in the final quarter, like they got five scores, but they had 16 shots a goal. I just think they need to tidy up the thing at the other end of the field. Like Jackie said defensively, and I'd agree, like they you know the boys started asking questions in the last quarter, maybe in particular, like said, likes of Jake Morris, John McGrath came on, Garrod O'Connor came on, and we looked a bit, we looked to be threatening and we got it back to a point, but like, like Galway were by far the better team in this game. As you say, Conor Whelan could have had three, five on his own. Like, And I just think that that's, that's what they will have to focus on massively. The defensive unit, brilliant, brilliant defensive unit. But lads up top then, I'm sure the boys are going to be saying to him, lads, you need to start being more clinical. Like, we, have, we, we, we won't put anything up against Limerick. We have no hope like, if we don't start taking these chances. like If it comes down to the final quarter against Limerick and Pope Fair, and they're getting 16 shots at the goal and only scoring three or four of them, they won't be getting through to an all in the final, but if they can improve that up to seven, eight, nine scores, well, then, like, you know, the, the lads at the back will, they're, they're teak tough. They're, they're very experienced defenders. The Mannions, like Bork, McInerney, Grealish, like these guys, like, you know, they're comfortable on the ball. They know their job. They do their job well. I think the boys at the other end of the field now need to probably ask themselves a few questions about how, how clinical they need to be or they're going to have to be, in, in my opinion. So I thought Tom Monaghan made a big statement when he came on, three points off the bench. I think that's kind of a, you know, it was either one way or the other with some players. He, he gets dropped or whatever you want to call it. And I thought Henry's very honest in his, his um, thing afterwards as well, saying, look, lads got dropped. And Tom Monaghan came in and put his hand up saying, I, I want to start now the next day. So that'll be good for them. As regards tip, lads, it's, it's, it, it, is, it is going to be a long winter. I suppose the people aren't um, realise we do think very differently in tip. We have our divisional championships, north, south, mid and west with no east tip. So we just... Uh, we just go against the compass and everything here. That's and, too close. Uh, that's too close to Kilkenny. Yeah, yeah. So we go <laughs> mid. Uh, they're, they're actually they're actually started there last night. The South Championship started last night, and the great Owen Kelly was playing in goals for Mullen Horn Jack. No way. He's still going Please, strong, boy. Right? Still wanted to see some of <laughs> And uh, so the North Championship and the rest championships, they all get going now Saturday and Sunday week, and they're knockout, and then the county championship proper starts in the July. So while it will be long, you know, it'll be it'll be an interesting, I suppose, couple of months in the club championship now for Tip, but obviously we'd rather let's be getting ready for semi-final. But what the answers are, I don't know, but I'd say there will be there will be a good a, a good sit down with all of them with the management and say, where are we going to get this right for next year? Because look, lads, I'll be totally honest, we would have taken a hand off anyone to get out of Munster this year. Mm-hmm. We got out of Munster, there's a bit of progress being made, and now we need to build on it next year and um and and get and get the majority of that group um back together again. Like I well, would that's love. the interesting thing, actually, Rory, just to jump no, in. No, like jump that, in. That, uh, like, okay, the 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 way they've gone out is is very annoying, and and you can sense their frustration. Yeah, you can even you can, you can feel it off Shane. Yeah, because because exactly, you you're not the first person I've heard the two point hammering out of over the last sort of yeah. You see, not hours, everyone in Maliki, not Maliki, not everyone in Tip in like say agrees with that, right? Yeah, but I, exactly. I'm saying from a hurling point of view, it was like, and yeah. I, that's my honest opinion. Like. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and I know it's just tip people that I've heard this from. I haven't heard anybody kind of go. Jesus, we 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 should have we, we you know the the performance deserved us to go through. Yeah, God, we were, no, yeah. We're, we're we're so much better, but um, it is it is interesting. Like to to go out so flat, you would think, oh, geez, management might get a bit of a do in here, and especially because there's that wee parallel with how Waterford went out last year. Uh, you know, starting the the championship in a like in a real kind of. Real really flurry, went. looking really encouraging, and then just fading out towards the end. And like you do that once, uh, you do it twice with two different teams. Okay, you, you, you 
you definitely don't want to do it a third time next year. But I think like Cahill and Mikey Beavins get, they get a pass because it's their first year and because this year has been so much better than last year. Like what people do, people do get, get carried away with, and, and especially with, with, when a monster championship is, is, is as sort of prime primal as it was. And, and, and the games were so brilliant uh, for Tipperary to get out of that, considering where they were this time last year is, is probably like, it's probably net progress. It is definitely net progress, but it's probably not a bad year. It has just ended in a real whimper. Yeah, I agree totally, Manica. Yeah, I agree totally. I think we're in a much better place. We you had the two draws, you had the win against Clare, albeit Clare kind of slip, maybe sleepwalked into it in Innes. But that's 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 for us that for, for people who know other hurling, I think from inside and outside the county there is there has been progress made. There has been a core group kind of brought in now that have got great experience. And look, just to build on that for next year, that's that's I, that's what we're hoping. I know you love, you know, giving some solace to Tipperary supporters, Jackie. So, <laughs> so have you? Any, have you? Have you any balm for these open wounds they're feeling currently? I suppose. Look, Maliki is right. When you do, I suppose, look at it, it is a progress year for Tipperary, considering yeah. where they are. I know this results in leave a bad taste in their mouth, but I suppose if you clinically look at it, um. There are some really good young lads coming through. Um, you know, Garrod O'Connor, I think, has been a huge plus. I know you kind of picked up an injury and when he came on the weekend. Um, Brian O'Mara has been a plus. You know, there are, Rhys Shelley has been a really good year. So there is stuff there to, to work on. I suppose probably the big things now will be, you know, how many of the lads stay around? What will Shane Cal do? You'd love for the sake of the game. You hope that Noel McGrath is still there. I'd imagine he will be. So it's how they kind of manage that. So there is some green shoots within that, Rory. Like, you know, it's just, it's such a, you'd say something if they went toe to toe with Galway and just came up a bit short or something happened. And then you can kind of go, look, lads, you know, we, we gave it our all. It's just, when you leave it with a flat performance, it's just, you're scratching your head. You really are. Um, especially when the kind of dovetail from, we said a monster championship. They had the Offaly game. It wasn't really vigorous. They weren't crippled with injuries in any shape or form. I know they've had injuries earlier in the year, but they seem to have dealt with them and had a plan around it. Um, so there's some green shoots, and it's important that the whole year isn't looked through the lens of the final performance, and it should be taken in a total as you know what they've done, the new style of play, you know the progress of Jake Morris, the younger guys coming through. Um, and look, you have to think like you know they still have Barry Heffernan and these lads come back next year, so. They're, to be fair, it, the glass is very much half full in Tipperary Hurland at the minute. We will have a small look ahead to both semi-finals shortly, but I just wanted to have it. We don't have to spend too long because the other game was extremely one-sided. I think from a Dublin hurling perspective, so I know now they got a bit of a chasing experience on Saturday and it's look clear are all Ireland contenders. I think Dublin are very much a new team, Mal, and I think they have definitely made some improvements he's found yeah. a couple of new players but it's just like it's getting up another couple of levels in terms of fitness conditioning ball work and I think in fairness to Michal Donahue he has done a good job I mean they went toe to toe with Galway we're unlucky not to come out with a victory there and um they were you know like they've had they've made some strides this year with what is largely a very new team yeah, and considering who they lost sort of over the winter, you know, yeah, Chris Crummy, like Chris and Crummy, Liam Rush, Mark Shute, you know, Sean Moore, and you're talking one, like, one of the O'Callaghan's did Keen O'Callaghan. Yeah, Keen O'Callaghan, like, you know, there's five, you spin the team back sort of four years, and they're, they're five pillars of the team, more or less, aren't they? Uh, yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're serious. Um, they have, um, I was surprised that they got such a hiding, to be honest with you. Um, and I was really surprised, actually, at the nature of the goals in the first half. They were just so easy. Yeah. Mm. Claire didn't have to do an awful lot for us. They didn't really have to. They didn't have to chisel away. They didn't have to come up with some blinding piece of stick work. Like they kind of had they kind of went down the middle of the of the Dublin defence and buried a few goals and ended the game. Obviously, Donald Burke went off early. Um, you know, like, it's not that he would have he would have made it a game, but because the, the damage was, was at the other end of the pitch, but it takes a bit of the life out of Dublin because he's, like, he went into the weekend as the top scorer in the championship. He's, um, he's, the, he's the one completely dependable part of their their game and um, so that was that the, you know the the whole day was sort of 
under a bad sign for them. Um, but I think they've made progress. Um, I, you know, finishing, getting out of Leinster is not is never a given for them. Uh, I know they only have to essentially get past Wexford. Um, but the day that they beat Wexford, they like, it was like Wexford had an enormous amount of wides that day. Dublin kind of stuck in and got, and got out. Um, and I think me all done is sort of quietly. It's it's really talk about year one stuff. Like it's really really early for them. Um, but I think there's a kind of a solid foundation there. I hear that they're probably going to get a, a few of those lads back over the winter. Like. I think Chris Crummy will be back. I think Rushy is going to try and come back. I'm not sure about a couple of the others, but they'll get a few of those back in and there'll be a bit of experience around the place. Um, so, you look, you don't want your year to end like this. You like It's bad enough, Tipperary ended with a flat performance. It's worse to finish with a, with a hide, you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah. it's not, like, it's not, a, it's not a, br- it's a kind of a, not a nothing year, but as, as like, he has a huge job there. You know, they're not, this isn't Dalo's dubs. Like that, 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 that era is is gone. Like they have a long way to to a lot of rope to climb to get back up to where, where yeah. the contenders are. Yeah. Maliki, if I could just jump in there, I think one thing for him, and just from my own experience as someone who who was one of the players that depended a lot on a player, and I suppose it is the second time I mentioned him you know, this morning, Owen Kelly. Like say Owen Kelly was winning all stars for us when we were going terrible, mm-hmm. right? And we just kind of, I remember the first championship match I played was against Limerick. Owen Kelly scored 14 points mm. and he could have scored eight of them from play. And it was like, we, we just kind of got into a stage and even a couple of years before I joined Tip, we got into a stage where, uh, sure, look, Owen, Owen will get us out of it. Like, it's fine, you know. And it took us nearly till Sheedy took over to say, let's the rest of us have to start doing something here, like, and stop relying on one lad, like, in a club game. And I think, like, I don't know how dumb people feel about this. I think that's the way it is with Donald Burke, like. I think that there is a reliance on him. Like he's averaging 11 points a game coming into the game the other day. He, he goes off injured and maybe, you know, now in fairness, Keena Sullivan, he stepped up, he scored 10 threes. But it's what Donald Burke gives you. Like it's it's mm-hmm. the attention he takes. And like, I just don't know, do they have other players to kind of really take on the mantra like when he steps away? And I think until they do, Maliki, I just don't see him making real progress. Like, like example, I was a player that relied on someone until we had a kind of cop on moment to say the rest of us need to start doing something here. And I, I, that for me is with Dublin at the moment and Donald Burke. I think the rest of them kind of need to say, like the day Donald Burke's not there, the day it's not happening. We usually don't win games. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the way I see it with them. And I think if they really want to make progress, really want to push on, I think they need another one, two guys up in the forward line in particular to kind of step up and say, we, we'll grab this by the scruff of the neck if it's not happening for you today, Donald. So... That's 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 my take on it. He's top championship and the top scorer championship, and I just think I just I think the other I think there isn't enough being made about the Hoggy and TJ thing either. I know mm-hmm. we've all said it in other sports that the lads are nearly run onto the field when he breaks the record. But TJ is five points off Hoggy there at the moment, and probably will break it like in semi final. So just there's there's a few greats I suppose that are still playing the game. But that's my opinion on the Donald Burke and the Dublin team, Melik. Yeah. yeah. Good segue for the semi final, and just a quick word on Claire. In terms of like, I mean, three, four, Tony Kelly, one eleven, Mark Rogers. What can they take out of the game, Jackie? And in terms of their recovery after this year's Munster final in comparison to last year, do you see any difference in terms of their body language and potentially then the type of challenge that they will bring to kill Kenny this time around? Because obviously they were so. It, we talked. We spoke about flat performances. Like last year's semi final against Kilkenny was probably the flattest we've seen from Clare in the Brian Lohan tenure. So like, is do they look like they're in a different space now coming into this game? Yeah, I do feel they are definitely in a, a different space, Rory. I think they'll just probably will just take some confidence from the game. Um, it was probably good to get that game uh, to get the Munster final out of their system because if you think of last year, they just about stumbled over Wexford in the all Ireland quarter final only for kind of Tony Kelly and Shane O'Donnell in the last 10 or 15 minutes where they just grabbed the scruff of the neck. It was obviously an awful lot more comfortable performance. Um, the concerning parts will be John Conlon going off again with with, with, with the um, supposed concussion. And we see the loss of him last year against Kilkenny and how that kind of affected the team. Um, you know, there still will be maybe what are they going to do with the full back position? Is Connor Cleary going to get back in there? You potentially could be looking at maybe the spine of their defence gone. So if that was the case, that would be a huge blow to them. 
Um, I'm probably looking forward to some, I hope Mikey Butler was at home sharpening his hurdles the weekend for Tony Kelly because he'll have to have him razor sharp for him. Mark Rogers' <laughs> form is very impressive. Um, I suppose, and, and certain players, David Fitzgerald has probably become a probably real enforcer. Um, and if you kind of look around the landscape of hurling, Garrod Hagerty, Kyle Hayes, David, David Fitzgerald, probably Walter and Garrod McInerney, they're probably in an elite group where they're Six four, six five, hugely athletic, massive power. So how can Kenny will, will deal with him? I would imagine David Blanchfield um would probably try team up on him and, and limit his influence because he was hugely influ- influential the weekend. So a lot of nice little matchups thrown up already. I do think they're in a different space. I think if you look at the Munster final last year for Clare, you know, coming out of that there was, you know, I suppose we're probably going back into training. Brian Lowe's going, lads, what can we really improve on here? We were so good in the Munster final. Whereas the last day in the month of final, like, right, we didn't deal with Aaron Glan well inside. We had a huge amount of wides, that kind of, um, you know, that second quarter, we didn't really push push on. Um, so they have areas to to to, um, to to push on on and improve, I suppose, from a Kilkenny point of view. They'll have looked at that and say, look, these guys are fairly potent. They get a chance. They seem to be, they seem to have be a bit more ruthless than they were in the month of final. Will Adrian Mullen be back? He'd be a huge loss if Kilkenny can't get him back as well. So, I would see Kilkenny probably coming into the game in a similar kind of mindset to last year. Clare in a completely different world, but the John Conlon thing and the Conor Cleary, they will definitely need one of those, if not two of them, back for, for Kilkenny. The semi-final pairings, Mal, obviously lack novelty, repeat of last year, yeah. and that might not necessarily float everyone's boat, and that's fine. But I still think, you know, the reality is they're the four best teams. Would that be fair? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I would, I would worry too much about it being the same four teams. Uh, Jesus, uh, we spent long enough watching um, Kilkenny and uh, Tipperary play uh, every All Ireland final for uh, five, six years in a row. So, um, and none of them were bad games. So, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't. I don't have any big problem with it uh, at all. I think they're fascinating games. I think it's really interesting. Jackie touched on it there. The the effect of injuries this year, um, like we're going, we're, we're going to be in all Ireland semi-finals without some really big names. Like you're going to have no Declan Hannan, you're going to have no Sean Finn, you're going to have like if John Conlon misses out again, like you're talking about the real sort of top totem players for these counties missing out. Um, Adrian Mullins another one like that. Like if you're going into these games. It, it's it's what makes them actually incredibly difficult to assess this far out. You know, the kind of way, like, you're going to have to get sort of three days out before you sort of get a sense of who's going to be there because the games are so tight. Like, I, do, I can't see a blowout on, on either side. So when you're talking about a game that in normal times is going to be close, but you're removing some of the biggest players from that game, it's a little bit like Galway Mayo uh, in the football yesterday, like really tight game, but two of Galway's players were were injured. Damien Comer and Sean Kelly just they both took the field, they both played injured, and it it affected Galway's performance. So I think that's a really big going to be a really big factor uh, as we get closer to the game next week. Um, but they're absolutely the four best teams. Like whatever uh, troubles anybody has about comparing. Leinster Championship to Munster Championship and is it the fairest way to run a competition that you're knocking out like you're knocking out Cork who were probably an All-Ireland contender or whatever Um, the one thing you can say for the championship is that everybody has had their examinations there's nobody has fluked their way to an All-Ireland semi-final yeah. here so you know I, I, I have no trouble watching the four teams go at it again they're, they're as good as, as what there is in the championship you got your chance. That's it. That's absolutely it. So, if, Shane, as a bit of novelty from here, so who do you see? And I know predictions are a bit naff and potentially a little juvenile, but mm-hmm. All Ireland final pairings could we potentially see Clare versus Limerick Mark three, or the first Galway Kilkenny final since when? Twenty fifteen? Is it? Is that where you going back that far? Yeah. Yeah. 
you could yeah you could you could but I, I i agree with Maliki. i just think it's so hard to call it because i think like say who's going to be in and who's going to be out can, can particularly the clear to kenny game i think like if is is, is mullen going to be if, is, is it going to be a runner jackie is it like or is it like would he would he be in contention to, to feature on the day like you know no comment <laughs> so that means that means uh, yeah he's going he's fully right fit he's fully fit yeah, yeah. that means he's fully fit yeah, yeah. he's flying uh, I think I think if he's like if he's there on the flip side of the, the equivalent of Adrian Mullen on the player side is John Conlon and if John Conlon can play or not I think it's massive you see what happened last year like they put a guy in there who's not even on the panel I think this year and to try and do a job and it just absolutely just fell apart for him and you could say David McInerney you know he he did a bit of the warm up there, I think, in the for the Dublin game, but he, you know, he wasn't he wasn't risked. So, but there's still he's still not good as good as John Conlon at doing that six job, at doing that covering job, at being at being so good at knowing where to be at the right time and just the leadership he gives. So, I think they're massive things, Rory. I think I think it's mm. if, if 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 those guys are in or out, I think it's it sways it massively. You know, I think as you've all said, Claire coming in is much fresher than what they were last year. They're, they've, they've a much stronger panel as well. Like if you take, you know, you've Shanahan coming on, you know, you've Paul Flanagan if you need it in the backs. David Reedy is an option now as well. He was back uh, for the Dublin game there as well. Talked out David McInerney, probably feature. We, we haven't even mentioned Ed McCarthy and he was probably their, their, their player of the league really up to this. Like, but he, you know, the, what I'm trying to say is they don't, if Condon's loss is monumental because up front, they can get guys in and they can kind of, you know, fill the holes, we'll say, as they say, because they've more... They have more of a reserve up front, but it's at the back. If Conlon is out, it's it's massive. Like so, I, I think it's very hard to call until you find out if those guys are in and out. And with this concussion period now, if that's what it is, he mightn't even be back in time. Maybe if, if if a call is made to say that he needs whatever, maybe 12, 14 days to to, to fully recover from this, he, it wouldn't be within the time frame. So that would be another thing that that, that could be um interesting. So I, I find it very hard to call when we are in the final, Rory. I think there's to be as useful now as as someone said as, as a handbrake in a canoe now making a make it making a call there now at the moment. Ken. I, but let, just finally, and Jackie for you, still Limerick's crown to lose. He, he, probably, yeah, it would. And even if you're thinking of like I was just thinking, imagine if they did lose John Conlon and um and Connor Cleary, the heart of your defence, I said no one would be able to really offset that. Then I actually thought of 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 Limerick. And they're out without Declan Hannan and Sean Finn, and they probably will be able to juggle it around and and get away with. It. But yeah, it's probably Limericks are the front runners. If you think of Galway, are still probably not fully consistent enough. We haven't seen enough of them. Um, Clare probably the injuries will will mar. They're probably lead into the into the All Ireland semi final. I think Kenny probably for long periods of the Leinster final weren't really they were, were playing second fiddle so from that point of view yeah Limerick seemed to be in, in, in the front the front runner but um, still a lot of hurling to be played Rory yeah well like I'm really looking forward to it it's my favourite weekend of the whole year is All-Ireland Hurling semi-final weekend it's just a brilliant brilliant weekend I can't wait for it just Saturday and Sunday and I'll be going to both matches and it's great when you go and you don't have a vested interest because you just you just hope for mayhem and that's hopefully what yeah, we Yeah, but you get. don't have to pay you don't have to pay three grand to stay up for the night as well, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Shane, 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 <laughs> Shane, 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 I have the house full sign already put up for next weekend because <laughs> Cork are coming up to Dublin. So, uh, listen, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a two absolute dingers, hopefully. And listen, I just want to say thanks to Mal Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Shane. Thanks to Enda earlier. And we look forward to previewing these football quarterfinals on Thursday. And we'll see everybody then. Oh, he's got, there's the whistle. It's over. It's over.